when you buy a baseball team, before you actually buy it, they give you a, a document you have to sign. And in that document, you contractually agree to do a number of things, and one of which is to uh, abide by the commissioner approving all long-term contracts. So, you know, it's, it's a little different than just buying a business, or if you own a private company, you don't have a, you know, I mean, you may be into, a, you're actually effectively in a regulated business in baseball. And you've actually contractually committed to be regulated by the commissioner. You've signed a release. It's effectively a business risk. Correct. And that's you accept I, that. That's so the way I look at So the $220 odd million dollars that you laid down in... 223. 223 that you laid down in 2005 for the Brewers was invested with that in mind. That at any time, the league could rule against you even if it wasn't in your business interests. And we would have to abide by that. That's correct. It doesn't leave you the slightest bit uncomfortable. Well, there's a lot of things in life that leave me uncomfortable. You know, I'm a uh, distressed investor, among other things. So, uh, I, you know, my, my diligence it, it showed that, uh, you know, baseball uh, was a terrific. Uh, with the, with the risks you have with that, you had the benefits of being in a partnership with 29 other teams and something that's a national pastime. So I, I felt that the the risk reward was was in the right place. You paid 223, as you just pointed out. I've seen a current valuation done by Forbes magazine. <laughs> yes, we saw that. Uh, 235. So if that's accurate, and that's the only figure I've got to go on, that's a compound return of less than one percent a year. Does that make baseball a bad investment? Uh, well, uh, you know, we did assume as part of the 223, we did assume some debt. So the we were going to compute an IR or calculate an IRR to our investors. It's it's greater than one percent. Do you think that the prospects for your personal investment in the Brewers will improve over time? The team is you'll see more capital appreciation, so to speak. The team will be worth more, and that may extend to other small market clubs as well. Uh, yes, because, you know, again, it's the national pastime and it's, uh, it's a regulated monopoly and there's only 30 of them. So, uh, yes, I think baseball over time is, a, is an investment we'll, that will appreciate. Will it appreciate at the same rate as uh, an unagency mortgage or, a, you know, a, a distressed takeover of a company? Maybe not. But it, it, it is an investment which over time has been a good asset play and I think will continue to be so. But will the appreciation of that asset or the assets of baseball as an industry accrue disproportionately to the larger market clubs. You're among those who have complained that the larger market clubs, like New York, for example, New York Yankees specifically, have some unfair advantages because there isn't a salary cap in the league. When I bought the team, and albeit this was now six years ago, as you said, about 40% of our revenues at the Milwaukee Brewers came from a, a shared source, a, a national TV contract or uh, revenue sharing or whatnot. And so really was as much of an investment in Major League Baseball as it was, in, at least the way I was looking at it as, as an investor, as it was an investor in the Milwaukee Brewers you know, baseball club. And that, I think that, that skews as, as you get to smaller markets, it's a bigger percentage. And as you get to larger markets, it's smaller. So actually, I think the, the converse might be true that in a smaller market team, it's more of a bet on or investment in baseball than in that particular market.